Hi, Lath from Wineberry Hill. Did you know that chemical fertilizers harm your soil in the long run? In this video, we'll talk about why chemical fertilizers are a short-term fix with long-term consequences. I'll introduce you to Gabe Brown, a farmer who revolutionized his approach by focusing on soil health. I'll show you how to apply these concepts in your own garden, and perhaps most importantly, we'll talk about the mycelial network. Thanks for commenting and subscribing. They make this channel possible. For years, gardeners have relied on commercial fertilizers to boost plant growth. These products deliver quick results by directly supplying nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. But this quick fix comes at a pretty steep cost. These chemicals create dependency. The plant is relying on the farmer to provide the chemicals, and that means the farmer is depending on a chemical factory somewhere to supply him with those chemicals. It is a classic doom loop of dependency. Essentially, it's drug addiction for plants. Sadly, it gets to the point where the farmer must use fertilizer and pesticide because the growing environment has become totally dependent on those artificial inputs. Commercial fertilizers degrade the soil by reducing organic matter and microbial density, making it harder for plants to access water and nutrients. And if that's not enough, they contribute to waterway contamination and leave residue in our food and in our bodies. Let's look at Gabe Brown's inspiring story. Gabe was a conventional farmer facing declining soil quality and struggling crops, despite using modern chemical fertilizers. Frustrated, he turned to regenerative agriculture. One of the most fascinating things I learned from Gabe Brown's book, Dirt to Soil, was his discussion about the mycelial network, which is a underground web of fungal threads that connects plants. This network allows plants to share water, nutrients, and beneficial microbes. Imagine one plant saying, I need help with a pest or nutrient, and another plant on the network, or the network itself, responds by saying, here, I have something over here, let me send it over via the network. This was such a mind-blowing concept for me, and I imagine it might be for some of you as well. Gabe discovered that focusing on soil health was the key. He abandoned tilling, introduced cover crops, diversified his crops, and integrated livestock into his farming system. All of these changes transformed his depleted dirt into rich soil, soil that was teeming with life, all by changing the way that he thought about his farm, treating it as the ecosystem that it was, not a monoculture. The result was he improved the yields on his farm. He uh, made it more resilient to things like drought and pests. Now I'm gonna leave a link in the description to this video uh, to his uh, both print and digital book, as well as the audio book, which is pretty cool because he reads it himself. So how can you apply the concepts of regenerative farming to your garden? Here are four tips. The first tip is avoid tilling. Tilling breaks up the structure of the soil. Remember we talked about the mycelial network? Well, all of those little fungal threads that connect all of the different plants uh, in your ecosystem are very easily ripped apart when you till. And so you might wanna start investigating what, what it's like to do no-till gardening. Uh, you also want to think about other organisms that are, that are crucial to those ecosystems, things like earthworms. Uh, so not tilling is one of the first things that you can do to improve the ability of the plants to talk to each other. Can you hear me now? Good. Second, use cover crops. Cover crops like rye or clover, uh, you know, legumes are especially nice because of how they store nitrogen below the surface in the soil. So they contribute to soil fertility, uh, they also contribute to the structure of the soil itself, and they also aid in preventing erosion. Number three, incorporate compost and well-seasoned manure into your routine. 
By doing this, you will help the soil to hold on to moisture and uh, boost soil fertility by feeding those beneficial organisms. And fourth, think in terms of plant diversity. Instead of monoculture planting where it's all one type of plant in a bed, uh, think about what plants like to grow together, what different types of plants grow together. And it's a simple, you know, uh, internet search away. What are the good companion plants for vegetable X? And you'll discover that there are really interesting combinations of plants that like to grow together. Now, just like breaking free from a, a drug dependency as a, as a human, chemical dependency, there's going to be a break-in period when you no longer are spoon-feeding fertilizer to the plant and the plant is in the process of building up soil structure and soil health. And so there is, like I said, there's a break-in period and it'll be more difficult in the beginning before it gets better, but it's worth it. When you think about it, uh, it's pretty ironic that a person in one part of the world trying to grow food in their backyard is dependent on a chemical factory in another part of the country or another part of the world. That's crazy. And yet, we all do it at some point in our gardening lives. So, it's worth the effort to break free. Think about the environment, the ecosystem that makes up a healthy garden. It's not just a plant or a bag of soil that you chuck in there. It's this incredible little city that develops around all of that. And so, you know, let these plants talk to each other by means of the mycelial network. Soil that was teeming with life. Now, and then what? Then what happened? So important for that little tiny nanoscale. I, I almost kind of made it, and then I just started making up stuff. Yeah. So these plants will help with soil structure, as well as there's this one other thing in my brain stopped working. That's it. Dial tone. Nothing going on up here. You being able to just depend on your plants, your plants not depending. I am rambling, rambling, rambling. Well, thank you for making it to the end of this video. As I always say, I'm just amazed that people watch my videos all the way through. Um, please comment. It really does help the channel. And, you know, do all the YouTube stuff. Uh, subscribe and consider uh, becoming a member. And, of course, if you like this video, you might like these.